Welcome back. So let's now start with the next uh, chapter about tolerant retrieval. So spell checks, that sort of things. Uh, let's do a quick recap. It's always useful you know, to just take a step back for uh, one, two minutes and just uh, look at what we have done so far if, uh, since the beginning of the lecture. So we have looked into Boolean retrieval with languages like this, with and or not, right? This is called Boolean querying. And given a set of documents, that's our input collection, we execute the query to find a subset of the input collection, and that's the output of the query, right? So it's a subset of the original uh, documents, right? We saw that in order to make this uh, querying system, Boolean querying fast, we need to build the standard inverted index, right? So the standard inverted index, it's standard because this is the basic version, and then of course you can enhance it in plenty of ways. Uh, so the standard inverted index has here the terms, right? And here linked to a list of the documents that contain them and every one of them is called the posting. It is a pair made of that document and that term. That's called the posting. Here we have the document frequency. That's basically the size of the, uh, uh, of the uh, posting list. And we saw that this can be used for optimizations because then you can optimize the order in which you compute the intersections uh, thanks to this number right there. All right, so that's the standard index. We have seen that the construction of the index is not trivial because there's a lot of steps that are not trivial in there. You need to collect the documents, you need to tokenize the document by you know, uh, extracting the terms, uh, you need to extracting the tokens, sorry, then you need to do the linguistic pre-processing. We saw there's plenty of ways of lemmatization, uh, uh, stem, stemming, and so on and so on, depending on the language. It highly depends on the language because of the diversity of languages. This is what we saw uh, last week. Once you have done that, then you arrive to uh, types, so the equivalence classes, for example, if you did it in that way, and that gives you the term that finally uh, lands into that standard inverted index. All right. So we looked into stop words. Stop words are lists of words that are incredibly frequent uh, in the language. Uh, and for this reason, back then, when we didn't have as many computer resources as we have today, uh, we just dropped them because this takes a lot of space. The postings list were just enormous. Actually, the posting list of the stop words were just like the entire collection, probably, right? I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that if you index uh, uh, all the English words uh, uh, in the world, oh, sorry, all the English books in the world, I can almost assure you that this will be almost the entire list of books in the entire world. Not all of them. Do you know why not all of them? Because it turns out that somebody for fun uh, try to write books that on purpose never contain the letter, for example, the letter E or the letter A and so on and so on. And so you will, of course, have these books that will be uh, not, in, not in the list, right? But this is more of a, an art, uh, but it's a masterpiece. I mean, the, uh, managing to write an entire book, not using a, a given vowel is actually uh, pretty awesome. But anyway, anyway parenthesis close. The posting lists are so long that we dropped them back. All right. Uh, uh, then we saw the equivalence classes. This is when you want to group together the, the words that kind of belong together in terms of, uh, of querying, right? And this is what we call the types, right? Uh, and then the type will give you a term in the actual index structure. Then we looked into stemming, which is the Porter stemmer. That's uh, an extremely popular way of building these equivalence classes by actually uh, chopping the end of the words with some very mechanical set of rules, right? Uh, we looked at skip pointers, that is a performance improvement that allows you to magically skip uh, parts of the postings list when you want to take a shortcut, right? This is especially useful when you have a very long conjunction of queries, and then after a while, some of the posting lists uh, become so small that it makes sense to then skip entire pans of the other posting list that you are intersecting it with, right? So this is why we have skip pointers. We just looked, that was actually, technically it's a new recording now, but it was just a few minutes ago for us uh, that we looked into these byword indices and uh, the phrase search querying where we look at lists of words. We saw the positional index that additionally stores here the term frequency and the, the, the positions in there, it's list of words, no longer set of words. And this is when we introduced the notion of positional posting, non-positional posting. Non-positional posting means that it's really the, uh, the set of words, right? And positional posting, that's list of words, right? 
Okay, that's also the same reason why we also say positional token, non-positional token, right? But usually when somebody says token, it's a positional token because token is typically the place where it was uh, in the original document right after tokenization, right? But if you say positional token, non-positional token, then you're even more precise. Okay, okay, that's the recap. So now let's do new things and add more to our uh, body of knowledge. So search structures and here i will actually uh, use some of the concepts that you've learned in other lectures right so you will see that it was actually useful to uh, to visit all these uh, basic lectures because they are used everywhere else in other courses so uh, this is our inverted index with well, a fancy version of that this is when we actually built it by uh, you know cutting these uh, these, uh, uh, these words uh, from a document i think it was shakespeare or something like that um so it's an inverted index. And uh, the question is, how do we look up terms based on a query? For example, let me ask you as quickly as possible. If I look for the term should, is it or is it not in there? Yes, no. Should, S-H-O-U-L-D. Anybody? I think I see some heads shaking yes. Yeah, and in the Zoom chat also? Uh, yeah, one just said yes as well. Yeah, exactly. So indeed it is there. What about could, C-O-U-L-D? I see uh, the Zoom no. chat. Uh, no, 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 exactly. No. It's not no. there. How did you manage to tell? Because they're sorted. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's a good point. They are sorted. So you probably looked it up with what is called this technique, the way you look up in the dictionary. Binary search? Binary search, exactly. You probably use binary search in order to find them or not find them. So indeed, should it's over there and could it's not. And how can you tell it's not? Because if it were, it would be there between a common and fair, but it's not. So it's not uh, uh, in there, so indeed. And how to locate it? Uh, well, yes, if you, if you look where it, whether it is there or not, then you, you, it's likely you also located it, right? Because then you found it. All right. Um, so now you are human beings and I gave you a sorted list, right? But everything we've doing, we're doing now, it must be done by a computer. Um, so, of course, you could sort it and then let the computer do, uh, do uh, a binary search, right? But in fact, there are structures for that sort of things. So, uh, if we look, for example, like here, I have this possible list abstracted away again with just letters in there. So, in that case, you see, you just need that flexibility. In that case, the terms are letters and the document IDs are integers, right? Sometimes I do it the other way around. Uh, but yeah, you just need to understand what's going on. So, I look for term E and it's there. And the missing part, and this is where we need the data structures, is in order to locate that term. So, so oh, actually, I could have asked you because I know you would have known. So let me directly tell you, solution one is a hash table. If you use a hash table, uh, then that basically means that you have here positions. You have a very big array with positions that's initially empty. Then you have this, uh, this term right there. And then you have this magical box uh, that is a cryptographic uh, sort of things. Uh, that gives you magically some sort of integer, right? It's called the hash. So it's the hash of A. And then that gives you position seven in that case, then you can store the posting list for A uh, in there. And then you can do the same with all the other terms and then they will all land somewhere. Some of the parts will be empty because that's how a hash table works, right? They are not all uh, taken. Actually, the, the longer it is, the more you avoid collisions, right? Uh, and then you put the posting list in there. So now we have a hash table. And when somebody now asks, for a specific term, you just compute the hash that tells you exactly where it is, that gives you two. What's the complexity of this? Is it logarithmic, linear? Constant, yeah. Constant, yeah, from chat. chat. Absolutely, so it is constant, O of one. That's how a hash table works, right? If, of course, hoping there are no collisions, right? So O of one, instantly, it's almost magic, you find directly the term and the posting list. Can you give me um, an example of something you cannot do 
with a hash table, the sort of queries that you cannot uh, easily look up in a hash table. Think of a relational database now, because that, that's not the sort of queries we would have done right here. We, we will in the future, but yeah, we you know, have a relational of, uh, yeah, We have a ahead. couple of answers. Let me just take the microphone. Uh, all, all words between two words, or like all numbers between two numbers, or all indices which fulfill a condition, which yeah, is relational, exactly. like small or greater. Absolutely, exactly. So, for example, this is probably what you meant: an interval, everything between between A and C, that's called the range query. You probably saw it also in relational database. It's in the where clause when you're looking for something in between uh, two numbers, and indeed, a hash table cannot do that. Because the only way you can do it is by enumerating all the possibilities and looking them up one by one. But that's not efficient. And that's even horrible if you're looking, for example, at doubles, right? Because then you have, a, I was about to say infinite. It's not infinite, of course, because in computer science, we don't have infinity, but uh, it's still a very large number. So it's impracticable. So indeed, in a hash table, you are not able to compute a range. We did not need ranges so far based on what we saw on Boolean queries, right? But we will need ranges very soon, uh, as we will see, for spell check. So this is why it's actually a severe limitation of hash tables. So we don't support range queries. There is also the issue that hash functions are not perfect. So of course, if you, if you uh, have collisions, then it's no longer O of one, but it grows a bit. But all of that, that's covered in data structures courses. You can add some linked lists to your hash table and so on. So there's plenty of ways uh, to fix it. And of course, you know that hash tables can take a lot of space if you don't want collisions, right? Because then you need to, uh, to have something sparse to actually try to avoid the collisions. So there's a few limitations, which is why we can use instead a structure uh, that maybe is not going to be constant. It's not going to be O of one. Uh, it's going to basically emulate the binary search for us. What's the complexity of the binary search? That should come in just one second, this answer. What's the complexity of a lookup with a binary search? Uh, logarithmic in chat. Yes, exactly, logarithmic, all right. And the structure, the data structure uh, is called the binary tree. That's how you emulate one, right? So the idea of a binary tree is that you have at most two children per nodes. Uh, it's, you, you like it also, it's a good property when it's balanced uh, and you, you don't have just everything in there and not, nothing on the other side. So there are so many kinds of binary trees that it's a whole zoo of binary tree uh, 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 structures, right? But these are some of the properties that you might want. Uh, uh, in there. So here, uh, for example, you have a difference of one, so it's well balanced. Here, that's not well balanced because you have here a weight of five. It's very heavy here, but here you only have one, so you see difference of four. And then you like to rebalance things a little bit in order to uh, to uh, to avoid this uh, this imbalance, right? Okay. But here, I refer to you to the data structures and algorithms courses where uh, you, you you can do that for hours. <laughs> These sort of things. But anyway, what I wanted to say is that one of them, a particular uh, uh, one of the binary trees is the binary search tree. And on the binary search tree, you also add numbers in there. And they are done in such a way that, for example, if you have four in there, then everything on the left is less and everything on the right is more than four, right? And that's, it works recursively in that way. And when you do it with words, because of course, words can be sorted as well, just like uh, integers, right? So if you do it in words, you are basically emulating the uh, binary search, uh, and you can add the posting lists in there, right? Uh, that, that, are, that are pointed to from the words in your binary uh, search tree. Uh, and then what I do is that I'm just rotating that 90 degrees, right? And abracadabra, this is now our standard inverted index, but now I added this little thing in there, it was implicit before. We have here a binary search tree that is our lookup structure uh, and this is what we call actually the dictionary. So vocabulary would be the set of all the terms. Dictionary is the actual structure that has this whole lookup integrated in there, right? So now we, 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 we have a more precise uh, uh, view of our standard inverted index. Now it's enhanced with this lookup uh, mechanism in order to find uh, any term in now logarithm O of log n, right? Of course, it also works with a hash table. If you prefer the hash table, you get, you get it in O of one, but as we said, there's uh, things that it cannot do. All right, so 
this, let, let's rotate again, <laughs> because usually, I mean, it's rare that computer scientists display their trees like this. Biologists like to display them even with a further 90 degree rotation, but computer scientists like to see them like that, the trees. Mathematicians, uh, they can see them in graphs. This is pretty much what they love to do, but there's not even a root in the mathematical tree. Um, but anyway, let's come back to that. Just to give you a few tweaks that we can do in there. First, we can decide that the postings lists are only at the leaves and that the nodes there that are non-terminal, so the non-leaves, are only there for lookup purposes uh, to decide left or right, but they are not linking to any postings list. That means that these are all, this is your vocabulary right there, and all of that is just a structure for the binary search, right? Uh, of course, you don't need to come up with totally new uh, words in there. You can just reuse the words that come from there, right? So you take, for example, the leftmost one from the right hand side. So you, you reuse not, you reuse two, and you reuse uh, or, yeah, the leftmost one. So or in there. Okay, so that's basically the idea, right? So this is an easy way uh, that you can design a binary search tree with all your posting lists and the vocabulary on the leaves. And just before, because we, we are going to take a break uh, now, but just before I stop for the break, what well, that means with more words, more terms, is that now, if you look for should, you can represent what we had earlier, the set of words like this, and then you just follow left or right by comparing, and in logarithmic, logarithmic time, you are going to uh, find this, uh, uh, this term, and then follow a pointer to the postings list directly from there, right? And the complexity, I, we already determined that it's logarithmic. All right, let's take, 15 minutes of break. And after the break, uh, we'll actually, uh, I will actually show you that binary trees are still not what we use for information retrieval. We still have to tweak a little bit uh, of something in there to get our final structure. So I will see you in 15 minutes uh, at 15 past three for the continuation of this lecture.